So we got them, the new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks from Apple, and it's exciting. Should you buy one? I know you're waiting to come here and have me tell you, yes, go buy one right now. But I'm going to tell you that right off the top, you probably shouldn't buy this. You, you, you specifically probably shouldn't buy this. There's going to be a couple of you out there where it makes sense, but I'm just going to be honest. The vast majority of people watching this channel should not buy this particular MacBook. Now, I'm actually going to recommend probably a lot of you to go back to last year and get the M1 version of either the Air or the MacBook Pro, which might sound confusing until I explain it all, which I will do right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name is Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. And today we're going to talk about the MacBook Pro. The new one, 14 to 16 inch, and why probably you shouldn't buy it, and maybe what you should buy. We're gonna spend some time on the Apple website, even though it's being hammered right now, to explain why this particular laptop may not be for you. Now, for the first time in a long time, I can definitely say that Apple using the word pro is definitely, definitely legitimate. This is not for the faint of heart. This thing, as you can see here, fully maxed out is over $6,000. Now, I don't expect many of you to spend $6,000 on a laptop. And to be honest, even at the base level of $2,000, I don't necessarily expect you to buy those either. But for those of you that are either prosumers or somewhere along the line where you're actually making money using a laptop, maybe this makes sense. I do want to make mention that the fact that they talked about how these start at $2,000 is a little bit misleading. Um, during the presentation, Apple showed that all of the cool features you saw there were for $2,000. At least you could start off there. But the reality is slightly different. Now, what I do like is they're talking about power to go for the people that are maybe just needing something a little bit better from a laptop. But the actual professional level people need to go to the supercharged MacBook Pros. And that's good because they are a separation of people that need this newer version of MacBook Pro. But like I said, during the presentation, they kind of led people down a path that wasn't necessarily true. If you look at the 14 inch here, while yes, indeed, it does start at $2,000. It is an eight core, 14 core GPU, eight core CPU, 14 core GPU that they never even discussed. They never showed any of the analytics or the testing from an eight core CPU. They were showing the kind of more maxed out version when they were showing the different, um, the different ways this thing performs. So you're probably not gonna get the same exact performance out of this particular configuration as you would for the ones that they were showing. But this is kind of normal. You see this in like car commercials all the time. You see a Lexus that might start at $30,000, but no one wants the $30,000 Lexus. It has nothing that you need. And here, this is the thing, when you're using this for a professional level use, you're probably gonna wanna know exactly what you're getting. And I don't see the point of getting a base level pro, unless you're just maybe starting out or something and you need something more powerful than the M1, but you don't need something so powerful that it's gonna break the bank. Now, at $2,000, this isn't bad, but when I start to look at these configurations, I start to wonder who is really buying these. Because if you're doing things like ProRes video, then you're going to need more than 512 gigs of storage. I mean, that's that's just from the leap. For me, no one should be buying any of these high level laptops with less than a terabyte of storage. It just doesn't make any sense. That's more of a concession to hit a certain price point. Again, that's not the only thing that could be confusing. When you press select, now you have a bunch of different options. And these are options that weren't even talked about during the presentation. You have 10 core CPUs with 14 core GPUs, 16 core GPUs, 24, 32, obviously the more number the better, but the more you're going to pay. And none of the presentation talked about these different slices of GPU. So you have no idea what the performance is going to be like. Of course, it'll be better than what's out there today. But if you wanna know if spending that extra $200 for two more cores is gonna be worth it or eight more cores in this particular instance, you're not gonna really know. And again, we're talking about starting at like $2,000 and making your way up to 2,700 very fast without even touching the storage option. Now, of course, with 32 gigs of RAM, that's great. Maybe you, you pair back on that a little bit to save a little bit of money and now you're at $2,300 but you know for sure you need a terabyte of storage. So now, again, you're back up to $2,500 for what you thought was gonna be a $2,000 purchase. Listen, at the end of the day, everything's gonna be nickel and dimed all the way up to you're spending so much money. But these, again, are for professional level use. And if you're making money from these, then that's no problem, it's a tax write-off. 
But for most of you that watch my channel, I think the answer is something much more simple. Earlier this year, I did the M1 MacBook Air video where I had iJustine on and helping me out kind of understanding what I'm getting into. And I loved it. And for value, this is it. Of course, the MacBook Pro version of this as well would be fine. The M1 processor is still amazing. Now, of course, you're gonna miss out on some of the incredible leaps that the new MacBook Pros are getting this year. But the reality is, again, for the most part, people that are gonna be in my comment section asking which they should buy, I'm gonna say either the Air or the Pro because you're probably not taking ProRes video, doing 8K streams and a bunch of other 3D rendering that you would absolutely need a laptop like that for. You probably just want something that's gonna work for some maybe light editing, some word processing, some surfing, some maybe some content creation, which by the way, this does very well. And the M1 actually does it quite, quite spectacularly. Don't be fooled by all the cool stuff you heard about today. There's lots of great stuff. And for the level of person who needs that, the M1 Pro and Max series of uh, CPUs is gonna be absolutely insane. But for you and I, I mean, we, we probably won't be getting that. But of course for us, the good thing is you'll be able to get one of these for really cheap because a lot of people are gonna be selling their M1 laptops to save up money to get the new M1 Pros and Maxes. So, why don't you go ahead and watch my video about the M1 MacBook Air, which I did here with iJustine. And I'll see you next time. Peace and love.